In this experiment, we'll be inserting the gene that causes green fluorescence into Agrobacterium tumefaciens, Agrobacterium rhizogenes, and Agrobacterium radiobacter. The materials for this experiment include uh, Eppendorf tubes, various sized micropipetters with pipette tips, a bag decinerator, an inoculating loop, a source plate of bacteria, in this case we'll have three source plates, calcium chloride and recovery medium, a crucible, tongs, a vortexer, liquid nitrogen, and an ice chest full of ice to keep the DNA that causes green fluorescence cool during this experiment. To begin with, we need to label two microfuge tubes, one with a plus sign and one with a minus sign. Uh, the plus sign indicates that that's the tube we're putting DNA in, and of course the minus sign means that we'll not be putting DNA in this tube. That will be the control tube, and the plus DNA tube will be our experimental tube. Use a sterile one milliliter pipette and add 250 microliters of ice cold calcium chloride solution to each tube. The calcium chloride solution is used to make the cells more competent to be transformed or to insert the DNA into the cell. From the source plate, we want to pick two or three or maybe four colonies of bacteria and add them to the Eppendorf tubes. Because the bacteria will stick to the inoculating lube, you'll need to twist it vigorously and you may want to shake it up and down in the solution to dislodge the cells that are stuck to the end of the lube. After you've added the cells to the Eppendorf tubes, cap them pretty good and stick them on the vortex machine so that the cells can be completely suspended in the calcium chloride. Now to the tube labeled with a plus sign, which indicates that we're going to be adding the DNA to this tube, we want to add 10 microliters of the DNA that causes green fluorescence. So that tube we've been keeping on ice in the ice bucket. We'll uncap it Use a micropipetter and add 10 microliters to the tube labeled with a plus on the lid. Since we're using a modified heat shock method to get the DNA into the bacterial cells, we're going to be using liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen will quickly freeze the cells, enabling us to use this heat shock method. So very carefully, from the thermos containing liquid nitrogen, pour a small amount into the crucible. And then with the tongs, you'll want to submerge the tips of the Eppendorf tubes into the liquid to instantaneously freeze the medium and the cells in the medium. Hold the tubes in place for about 60 seconds. And afterwards, you can see that the medium and the liquid containing the cells is completely frozen in the tips of the Eppendorf tubes.
Next we want to place both tubes into a 42 degrees Celsius water bath for about 90 seconds. This heat shock step facilitates the entry of DNA into the bacterial cells. Afterwards, we're going to return both tubes to the ice and incubate them for an additional two minutes. And then using a sterile pipette, we're going to add 250 microliters of recovery medium to each tube and mix them well. The next step is to incubate the cells for 30 minutes in a 37 degrees Celsius water bath for the cells to recover. Since the DNA stretch that we are using also contains the genes for ampicillin resistance, we're going to be plating the bacterial cells onto plates that contain ampicillin and plates that do not contain ampicillin. The bacterial cells that grow on the plates containing ampicillin will also contain the gene that causes green fluorescence. So from our control tubes we'll be plating half of the medium onto the plates and from our experimental tube we'll be plating half the medium onto the plates. After you've added half the medium to each plate, use the inoculating loop and spread the cells over the entire plate. To avoid contamination when plating, do not set the lid down on the lab bench. Lift the lid off the plate enough to spread the cells over the surface of the auger and be careful to avoid gouging the loop into the auger. Cover both plates and allow the liquid to be absorbed. This usually takes about 15 or 20 minutes. Last, we're going to incubate the plates overnight in a 26 degree chamber and check for results the next morning. The next picture is an illustration of the same ex or ex a similar experiment performed on E. coli. And in this particular example, you can see quite clearly how the bacterial cells glow under ultraviolet light. Now we'll be placing our plates on a transilluminator which is coming up in the next picture. And in the image it's quite difficult to see the bacterial cells. In this particular case we plated three types of bacteria. Agrobacterium tumefaciens, Agrobacterium rhizogenes, and Agrobacterium radiobacter. We only received transformants in the plates containing ampicillin for Agrobacterium tumefaciens and Agrobacterium rhizogenes. The circles around the colonies indicate where the colonies formed. The plate on the left is from Agrobacterium tumefaciens and the plate on the right is from Agrobacterium rhizogenes. We'll be using these cells to transform our plant in the last experiment. 